So it's hard for me to even imagine how this date began in a pre-internet world, in a pre-social media world, a pre-blog, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook world. But was Deckard, is Deckard a replicant, right, is the is the issue that this that the sci-fi fans like to talk about. Uh, Ridley Scott says yes. I mean, that's, she's really on the record as yes. Uh, Ford played him as human and thinks he is human, and I love that they have competing opinions about yes. it. Yes. Which yeah. well, puts they, it back... They argued about everything yeah, on that's this right. movie. They did. Yeah. they did, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, this is the thing, Ben. When you, when you write speculative fiction, yeah. people get to speculate. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> that's, that's the purpose of it, right? So... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are people watching right now when you say, so Deckard is a replicant, right? They're like, what? Yeah. What movie are you talking about? No, by the way, the first time that got mentioned to me, I'm not a science fiction, uh, I'm not a I'm not a fanboy, and I don't say that pejoratively. No, I think I did say it pejoratively. <laughs> you did, you did. Um, did. It's okay, I, I heard it. Let's be honest, right? I heard it. I, um, I, I can't wait to see the emails. Uh, but I do love that idea. Right. You know, and he wouldn't be a series six or something. So he'd have a, a longer lifespan. Um, so anyway, it's a, certainly a, it's a cool idea. I, I believe it's the purpose of this story. Yeah. to Put that idea into your head yeah. to make you question the idea of existence. I mean, that's that's what's interesting about this movie, Ben, to me is, as you pointed out in the intro, I love the premise of this film. This is because people talk about. Uh, film noir, like what are the themes of film noir? And one of the common themes is identity, right? Who am I? Right. What, what am I capable of? Do I really know who I am? This takes it to the next level. It's beyond identity, and it's a movie about existence. Like, who made me? Right. Like, why am I here? What is my purpose, you know? And it's amazing that they try to deal with that subject in like this ersatz detective story that, you know, which quite honestly doesn't age well. In, in my estimation, I yeah. what I thought was really cool in 1981, like, hey, look, they're doing like the Maltese Falcon and the Big Sleep as a science fiction movie. I find that all of that stuff that they're imitating, it doesn't really work that well any longer. Yeah, I, I when I saw it again, I thought it was slow, and and its bleakness, the way uh, like Get Carter, Mike Hodges' 1971 film with Michael Caine, the way uh, that's bleak. Uh, Friends Eddie Coyle is bleak, but that adds to it. Here, I wanted someone to. I mean, is is this future Los Angeles? First of all, it's unrealistic because it's always raining. Right, it's always never, raining. Right. Yeah. Well, there must be something about global warming. It right. must be some kind of. But I didn't. Uh, so I, 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 I felt a little punished by the bleakness. Uh, for, certainly, just from a viewing point of view, uh, frustrated me a little bit. No, that's a really interesting observation to me because I remember seeing this film and being so overpowered by the visuals. Yeah that your brain works really hard just to comprehend what you're watching. There's a lot. There's a, a lot happening. There is a lot going on. Like, what does that thing do? What right. is that? Why does this guy have the hoses coming out of his back? I mean, there's just so much stuff in the movie that it's hard to concentrate on the story. And then later on, you watch it and you realize... There isn't really much of a story there to concentrate on. Right. And it's interesting because the movie, to me, is a little bit soulless until the last scene. Right. And and Rutger Howard gives this movie its soul when he has his death scene yeah. on top of the building. And it's, it's spectacular. It's one of the great death scenes in movie history, as it's, far as I'm concerned. I agree. Uh, but yeah, so let's yeah let's go back and tell these guys how to remake their movie. I think they I think they're dying to hear from us. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> this is a thing that happens with movies that are hugely influential, is that they inspire so many other movies that twenty years yeah. later, when you go back and watch them, you say, eh, because you've seen it all imitated. That's right. It's, it's totally films, it's right? totally totally unfair. I mean, it I, is. And uh, uh, do you watch any of Westworld? Which, by the way, you can get yes. on uh, HBO Max. So, I mean, that's the first of all. The movie was great. The '74 uh, film was great. But you know, Westworld does a great job of exploring the consciousness exactly, uh, of the yeah. robots. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I get it that Westworld comes from Westworld, but it feels 
to me, massively influenced by Blade Runner. Yeah, I, I agree. But Ben, we are going to leave Los Angeles in 2019 behind because we have a date 